she had not dovish neutral the market is was and we and we had discussed this for months way overly bullish for some reasons I can't even understand uh, they they're right in their bullishness their timing is like a year off um, but you know they will be right not today Oh, nothing, Igor. So, um, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, it will change. And, and I remember, um, you know, the old story many years ago where I spent an entire year buying the U.S. dollar. And during the exact same time period, the same year, when I was generally speaking just selling dollars every day. Now, I was on 15-minute charts and hourly charts, but um, I'd, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd want to sell the U.S. dollar. Oh, no, I'd want to buy the U.S. dollar. I'm sorry. I'd just wake up in the morning and buy it. And this was many years ago. I'd just wake up in the morning and buy the dollar. Wake up in the morning and buy the dollar. That, that, that was my attitude, and that's generally what I did. But every single day, or virtually every single day, I'd read about George Soros selling the dollar. And I'm buying the dollar. He's selling the dollar. I made some money today buying the dollar. Then I'd read how he shorted another $100 million. And I'm like, well, who's right? Well, we were both right. <laughs> How could we both be right? How could I be buying dollars and, he's, and he, George Soros is selling dollars? And we're both right. How do you know Soros moves? Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, I actually sat on a board of directors with George Soros in 1995. So I'm in the annual report with George Soros and a bunch of other um, luminaries. So he's like, you know, whatever that means. Um, but no, he, does he call me? No. <laughs> but that's the God's honest truth. Um, I was thinking I should probably frame that now. Um, but um, as, as far as you know, him, you know, discussing things in very, you know, the fun. I, I used to get like 25 magazine and newspaper subscriptions from all over the world. Um, but anyway, so I'd read about various interviews and, you know, he'd discuss how he's short and it's the great short and the dollar's worthless and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, really? Because I'm buying it. So anyway, so the long story here is I, I bought for that year over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I did quite well. I was pretty happy with myself. Um, and then... Things finally did change at the Fed, and the dollar tanked for three years straight. So it was one year up, three years down. Well, guess what? George Soros had already built up a you know, $100 billion position and really was already short. He just saw the Fed was eventually going to change their policy and started building up the position. Well, I'm not that big of a trader, right? I can't hang on to a losing trade for a year, nor would I add to it and add to it, add to it. But he is, and so like with the so my 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 point here is the market was way overly bullish on the U.S. dollar. It was the appropriate action based on um, the their strategy, and that is the Fed raises and rates, dollar gets strong, right? Where they're wrong is when the Fed actually does it. But what they're doing is the right thing. They're just, for, for some reason I don't understand, but they, they were way overly aggressive on that strategy. And all of a sudden they've been caught um, with their pants down. Right? And euros jumped a, a, a thousand pips in, in three months. But I'll tell you what, most likely uh, two years from now, we will be at parity or lower. Or at least have done it, and then we'll see what happens from then. And we'll look back and say, well, they were right, but, you know, their timing was off. They were off a year. No, no, no. Justine says you're know, shorting for the very short term. No, no, exact opposite. It took him a year just to get his position. 
he could buy, you know, a hundred million here, a hundred million there, and over the course of a year, he finally built up a hundred billion dollar position. And then the dollar tanked, and he was already short a hundred billion dollars. And then he made money on his hundred billion dollars every single day for three years straight. And then he's then he smiles and he says, "Ah, I'm the one that was in for two hours at a time." So that's what I'm saying. We were both right. I ha I made money. Uh, for three years straight. He made money for three years straight. I just happened to be in and out of a trade every few hours. He was in the same trade for four years. Three years building it up. Or, or sorry, one year building it up and three years profit. And what, what was the difference? Well, there was no difference whatsoever. I was buying on the short term based on current Fed policy. Now, like George Soros, I foresaw a, a change in the near future in that policy, but it hadn't happened yet. He saw the same change, and it takes him a while, because he's such a big trader, it takes him a while to get into that position. Then, so I, I spent that whole year buying, and the Fed finally changed its policy, and I spent the next two or three years, just like George Soros, selling the dollar. And our strategies were always aligned with central banking policy. His was just, again, um, he had to start before the actual Fed. So there could be a guy like George Soros now in the market, and the euro goes up to like 115, 117. Let's say over the summer it touches 120, and he's selling euro dollar, selling, 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 selling. He doesn't have a stop, and the higher it goes, the more he sells. Then we all come back from summer vacation. Fed says, we're not going to raise in September, but we're thinking about December. Down we go, like a ton of bricks. Maybe a Grexit helps too. All of a sudden, you know, we're we're way to south, and and it was all correct. <laughs> it was all correct the whole time. Everything was correct. It's just a timing issue. What people did was the right thing. They just their timing was off, and so now they're readjusting their portfolio, and we'll just try again later. Okay. Well, hey, nice conversation. Let's do some technicals. Um, I'm going to record this uh, webinar like I always do, and I put it at youtube.com slash c slash traders way. Um, please leave a comment. I appreciate it. Um, I forget how many comments were there yesterday, but uh, more than 25, which I think is pretty cool. My name is William McDonald. I'm the FX market strategist for traders.com. Thank you for being a client. If you don't know, we're an ECN. You like Forex? We've got Forex. Right? You like gold, silver? We got that. Oh, how about oil? Oh, yeah, we got that. What else do you like? You like the FTSE? You like the DAX? You like the Nikkei? Like the S&P 500, you like the, you like the Nazi. We got all that too. How about binary options for scalping, or binary options for um, uh, hedging? Well, covered there too. It's like a trader's paradise. Uh, 38 likes on YouTube so I really appreciate that so tomorrow is a Friday and we'll do this session at fxstreet.com my last session there was trading on farm payrolls live and it was the most viewed webinar of the entire week and then the previous one was our regular strategy session and that was also the most um, popular webinar on FX Street for that particular week so good stuff. Let's get going. Not going. Get going. I said giddy up. There you go.
Let me remind you that trading and investing is risky, not appropriate for everyone. However, your past performance, good or bad, it's not indicative of future results. So it's a good idea to stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. All right. So we got CPI today out of the United States of America. What do you think about that? Okay, so that'll be important. Um, will it overshadow all the central banking stuff? No. So we knew that this week was extremely heavy on central banking um, announcements and, and policy changes or potential changes, right? Where did we have? The Bank of England. Then we had the Fed. Um, I think we got uh, the Bank of Japan later uh, tonight or tomorrow, depending on where you are. We had the Swiss National Bank. Uh, recently, we, we had the uh, the the, um, the, the uh, RBNZ. Um, what else? We had was it Norway or Sweden? They announced. Did I mention Switzerland? They did their thing. Just tons of stuff happening, man. Just tons and tons of stuff happening. So, you know, how, how important is this CPI? Well, the Fed has already told us that they're not going to raise interest rates, so why do we care about CPI? Right? What is CPI going to come out? Like 500%? <laughs> like... So uh, that's that. Um, if you're looking at the pig dog here, London opened off the 55 EMA with a 15-minute Stokes kicker, and it went in an uptrend. That's weird, isn't it? No, actually, it's not. wonder if there was... An important psychological number in there. Let's see. Let's uh, double click this horizontal line properties. Let's move it to 1.58 and let's see. Oh, wait, wrong one. Hang on. 1.58. Nah. Let's try that. Boom. Yeah, you know what? That might have been important. Up there. Oh, you know what? I did want 58. Oh, boy. Um, lack of sleep. You know, my, my wife actually told me, maybe for the first time in my entire marriage to her, she's like, you work too much. <laughs> no joke. I'm like, what do you mean, baby? That's what she told me this morning. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, maybe she's right, because she's pretty smart. So um, so anyways, um, just very interesting stuff going on here. Um, straight up. So what what's the discussion here? Well, you should know, have said it, um, we're, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but let's just cover it, because it's my job, so why don't I do it? Um, the Bank of England is in Marcia's language, much more hawkish than the, the Fed. And, you know, it's funny because the Bank of England isn't really hawkish, and the Fed's not really dovish. But all these UK numbers show inflation going. It's been pretty horrific for about, I don't know, 
four, five, six months. The numbers are just horrible. The whole time, Kanye says, don't worry about it, right? I mean, we've done this a dozen times in these sessions. I just want to make sure maybe there's somebody new in here. But we have talked about it, and it might have been yesterday. I can't even remember. Carney said, don't worry about it. Good. He's a conservative central banker. That's why the, the Bank of England hired him. He's a Canadian. He ran the Bank of Canada. Canada wasn't in a financial crisis of its own. Now, it got sucked down by everybody else, but it was never in a financial crisis um, at all. In fact, when times were good in Canada, Canada paid down its debt. <laughs> I mean, they were really in a good situation. So anyway, so the, um, he's such a guy that he's not going to mess around with you, mess around at all, right? He's just going to get the job, and that's that. Who's that rating? Anyway, so the numbers are horrible, and he's like, yeah, I, I see that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And we have been talking about that story. And then more recently, finally, we resumed sort of a, an upward movement here. Okay? Now, we were talking about that same story here. These moves are, are rumors of a, a better Bank of England. Then here's this pause, 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 you know, mostly due to falling inflation, due to falling oil prices. And we double bottom, and you know we're, we're moving up, right? So this is just you know, a fundamental change. You know, it's cool. And now it's even further supported by the timing of this, which is the market had been buying dollars. And now they realize they bought too many dollars. It's not that it was the wrong strategy, like I said before. It's the timing. Whoops. Now we have this perfect storm. Well, the perfect storm in the last, you know, 24 hours, you know, Carney is still not dovish, and the Fed is still not hawkish. And that sort of leads to up. Now, right or wrong, I can't really tell you, but um, what this suggests is the Bank of England raises interest rates before the Fed. That's what it says. That's what it's suggesting. The Bank of England raises before the Fed does. I don't really take it that way, but you know, um, we do know the facts, and I love trading the facts. The facts are Carney is not dovish, even though the numbers suggest he could be, certainly could be. So we're chasing the opinion of the central bankers. Yellen is not interested at all in raising interest rates anytime soon, and that the dollar weakens. And maybe Carney is concerned about this hidden inflation that he has somewhere, this hidden future inflation. And maybe it's money coming out of Europe and into London and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Who knows? So anyways, this, uh, this sucker goes up. Now, why in the world would you want to short this? So what someone was saying earlier, a couple of people, or something similar to this. Well, if you wanted to, let's talk about that. Mark, don't overthink. All right. If you want to be a bear, it has to get below that low. That's the first step. You're not even allowed to think about it. Okay? Am I clear on that? Look, this is an hourly chart, guys. Right? 
right? Down to the 21 by. Down to the 21 by. Down to the 21 by. Right? So we could be down to the 21 by. And you do that forever. Or until something changes. How would you feel if you shorted the top over and over and over again? So why, do you, why would you do it? So you, we just let it do that until, and let me change colors now. We'll, we'll do cayenne. Oh, it does this. stations that's where you throw out your hammock trade right yeah I'm not even talking about the 55 I mean that's kind of where it would roll um, you know so you got two situations it, it would probably do something like this is what I'm anticipating. If that doesn't work, um, it'll still reverse. It'll just reverse in a different way. It would. It would do this. Either way, okay. But once you get below that that black highlighted area, you're a lot less bullish. Cool. So to Mark who emailed me and to someone that said something about Ozzy and to everybody else that's thinking about it, you're not allowed to short until the market is bearish. Does that look bearish to you? No. What would bearish look like? How about this. How does that smell? As soon as you bake the shoulder, now you got permission. Green, 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 red, 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 red. All in favor, say aye. Yeah. So um, that's that. Um, some of you might argue, but no one did, that you might have tried to sell some of these because of extreme oscillator conditions, oscillaic conditions. Um, there you, babe. Um, but, you know, if that's the case, you paid the penalty. You were aggressive and you paid for it. Um, I'll show you a losing trade today. You want to see another losing trade since I gave you a losing trade yesterday? You're probably getting addicted to my losing trades. You've had plenty of my, uh, had plenty of my winners. Just want to make sure um, that you get a, a balanced view. I threw down a uh, aggressive trade. It was aggressive, I know, um, but I protected myself by keeping my stop close. Um, and it had to do with oscillators. Okay, I see it. All right. So, let me put this in here so that you can see my losing trade in all its glory. Um, I don't have an oscillator on this. <laughs> Hang on, i got to change all of this. Hang on. All right. Lars Vaya. Um... And there should be an hour, just making sure my charts are there. 
Um, oh, I still have it set up, actually. How lufle I had set up on this chart. All right. Good. Well, good. This is good and good. Good, 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 good. Well, I still want to show the oscillators. Let's look, first of all, at daily. Does that look bullish or bearish? Well, if you think it might possibly go up, that gives you permission to, to create bullish trade plans. Okay. Um, hourly, so it seemed like it wanted to go up, you know, around the London Open. Okay, we're, we're in this area here, guys. 15-minute chart. Oh, um, same thing. Way oversold, trying to rise. Then going into a five-minute chart. I got to, I got to turn that off. Um, had recognized that we were still bearish. That's what this is about. Recognized we were bearish, but we had so many oscillators. The five-minute wanted to go up. The 15 minute wanted to go up, the one hour wanted to go up, the one day wanted to go up, and you know, it's still pretty early in the trading session, right? Like 2.30, maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, prime time for a, for a pop. I just need support of blind man can see. So we come down and we ping off of a psych level and we start moving back up. Okay, just fine. So we come up here, and therefore I recognize or identify that the trend, that's what this channel is, was going down, and it possibly could trend back up this way. You see? That was the thought. None of this stuff to the right existed yet. Okay? So I'm kind of looking at uh, this area. So my idea is that it should come up into this area. I want it to come down, and I want it to hit the psychological, but it's also potentially a higher low. And maybe it's the bottom of this blue channel that's rising. You guys following me? If it was going to reverse, it would reverse there. This is my thought. Goes up a little higher. Cool. I'm a buyer right there. Oscillators not in my favor. Oh, dang it. But I'm risking, you know, I'm in at 123. My stop's at 122.80. I got chunks of corn bigger than that, right? Um, so there I am. And whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> uh, whatever. Uh, just uh, quite aggressive. Not a good trade. You should learn from that. I should have been waiting for the cycle down. And I should have waited for a break of, of this zone here, really. It, it should have played out more like this. You know, but sometimes you see what you want to see. But it was fifth wave, blah, blah, blah. I know, I know. It wasn't a good trade, but that's why I lost money. <laughs> what am I supposed to show you uh, only my stuff? How am I supposed to learn if I don't show you my dirty laundry, right? So it was just, you know, I knew it. I knew it was aggressive. And if it had gone up, and, and by the way, you know, it does very well off psych levels. There was still a pretty okay chance this went up for a while. And then if I was trading like pound dollar, uh, well, that's supposed to be a great British pound. Okay. If I was trading pig dog today, 
to the south side because I'm buying dollar in this yen pair, right? So if I was trading yen this pound dollar this way and I got it wrong, how fast would I lose 50 pips on pound dollar? Yeah, like today would have been somewhere around 5 or 10 minutes. 15 minutes, okay? Something like that, right? I could lose a lot of money fairly quickly, right? If I had been selling euro dollar today at this exact time, okay? How long, how long would it have taken me to lose 50 pips? Oh, I was short of that. And it jumped up. About the same. The only thing is, um, I was there when it all happened, so pound dollar had already taken off just as I traded. Took off like a ton of bricks first. And Euro just kind of hesitated, and about 10 minutes later, then it took off. And just zoop. And in the meantime, it still took probably, what, a half an hour or an hour for me to lose my 20 pips. And that's the nature of the USD yen. Just slower. And that was part of it. If I'm going to be aggressive, I might as well buy off a psych level. There was a pivot in there. It was the right time of day. And it could have gone up, and then it didn't. That's that. But it was calculated in there as being, you know, aggressive, but a little bit less risk on that pair than versus other pairs, okay? So I've done worse. Don't you be afraid of that. But, but say, Livy, um, what should we do here, folks? Anybody interested in that one? Oh, boo, boo, oh, boo, boo. And there's another one about that, y'all. You eyeballing that, Oscar? Yeah, could be a rabbit beep. All right, so you want to go through step-by-step -step how to do this if you're going to trade a reversal? Let's set up a J-Low. What, pray tell, is a J-Low? A big, wide bottom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, J-Lo a, has a big, wide bottom. Um, so a J-Lo, in this case, what you're predicting is that 4X is going to reverse, but it takes a long time. In my book, I describe it with a metaphor. All right, well, I suppose it's a simile, isn't it? 4X reverses like an old man easing into a hot bath. So your, your general attack is that. But we're going to need to use some fractal geometry. And for that to happen, it's probably going to go up, kick off the VMA, then come down, and let's say and it's going to go up to these move -tis, kick off that, come into this roll reversal area, work its way up to this resistance. Then it's going to take a fib of all of this down. So it's going to come down like this. Then it's going to... Uh, break out to get to that level and then it's going to come down and test this old 
this old area here, and then eventually works its way up. Okay. Meanwhile, this oscillator is just going to go up, uh, uh, <laughs> and kind of like that. Okay. It's the same thing. It just all all I've changed is instead of a four hour, it might be a one hour or a fifteen minute chart. I guess it'd be an hour. So the first thing to do is look for a bounce on an hourly chart. And like I said, it should go up to the four hour five, then come down and double bottom, then go up to the four hour fifty five, then come down, kick off this area. And work its way up. Okay? You following me so far? So we need to ask ourselves is the oscillator on the same um, appropriate for this type of scenario? And the answer is yes. Okay? So now what we're going to need is move to a 15 minute chart. We need to see a 15 minute oscillator like this and a 5 8 cross. It's going to go up for two hours, come down for two hours, and then go up probably all through Asia. And the London boys do kind of that tomorrow. And this is called a double bottom. And after the higher high, this is called a one, two, three reversal pattern. So a reversal pattern after the to confirm the first reversal pattern. So like I was saying before, if you're going to trade against the trend, you should at least wait for a reversal pattern at support or resistance even a blind person can see. Okay, and I think if you were trading the this double bottom, the big one, okay, if you were trading that and you waited for this, And then lost money. I'm okay with that. That's a decent. Deal. Okay. So your choice is here if you were going to be a conservative and disciplined trader to wait for all of this. Your entries would be either the double bottom play. Oh man, that was supposed to be red, not whatever that pink is. Magenta. Okay, your entry would either be right after the double bottom or right after the one, two, three. Because on a higher time frame, the whole thing is a double bottom. Okay, and th if all of this is entering right after the actual big double bottom, and if you were going to wait for all that and you were wrong, it's going to fall and you might want to look for the exact same thing down here. Because we know that is also support a blind man can see, right? How does that make you feel emotionally? It's going to take a while, but there's no need for you to bet against the trend now, is there?
feels good. Now, can I get a thumbs up for that? Here, I'll make it easier for you. Put a thumbs up there. That's yesterday's video. Okay? That would put that back up. No, no, the funny thing is, I think other traders are going to wait for it to reverse, have it come up here, and then they do it again. They do this. Okay, what's the, well, let's talk about this. Why does the yen get strength, strong? Let's just talk about basic facts here. Are you guys un, undoing it? Oh, no. Why does the yen get strong? Because the dollar is weak. Forget about that. Why does the yen get strong? No, yen has been weak, but why is it strong now? Change in policy statement? No. Has nothing to do with Japan. No, it's a safe haven. Just like the Swiss franc. Thank you. Yeah, risk off. That's it. And it will continue mission. I'll probably buy it down here, but it could go up. Okay, but my job as a technician now is simply wait for it to reverse and then trade it up. Yeah, why did gold go up? You know what? Gold still sucks, guys. Why did it go up? Because that's what you do in a risk-off time. Um, you want to see like dollar Swissy? Swiss franc got pretty strong. Kind of looks like the USD yen. That's all. This will this will change. Just doesn't have to happen now. So remember the market was wrong. You have to understand this. This is a fundamental thing. The market was wrong. They were overly bullish on the US dollar because they miss um, they were wrong on the central banking sentiment. They got that wrong. Okay. So at some point, the, the uh, Fed will raise interest rates. That's when the dollar will be strong again. That's it. Could be next year. Could be a rabbit. Could be. Okay. But as long as 
the ECB is doing quantitative easing, uh, you know, I'm not going to be bullish on the euro. Okay. Yeah, Bob says, well, what if they raise before the election? Yeah, that could happen, certainly. Could almost, yeah, could, could be. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. That's the fundamentals. What, I can't change that for you. But Wayne, that could be a year from now. Yep, could be. I had to wait probably nine months for a taper. But guess what? The market was wrong on the taper. Do you guys remember that? There was no way they were going to taper when the market thought they were. And I remember I was, I was coaching, and right before the Fed meeting, they, um, they had some guy on CNBC, and he, and he was uh, the guy that's on the floor, right? And he's like, I just spoke to a whole bunch of uh, you know, floor traders here at the New York Stock Exchange, and everybody believes they're going to taper. 100% chance. And I'm like, really? Because I don't think there's a chance in hell. And then, boom, they didn't taper. It's just, it, it just, you know, I guess what happens is that all the, the traders talk to each other and they just get themselves wrong. Um, right? So, um, it, so at that point, I'm like, stay dollar uh, bear. Stay dollar bear. The day they announce the, table, uh, the taper, become a dollar bull. And that's it. Then, then, but did the euro dollar drop? Not really. We needed... The ECB. Everybody thought they were going to do something in February. Nope. April. Nope. June, finally, right? So you have to wait for the fundamentals. Now, lots of traders try to front run these things, but in those examples, the traders were wrong. So be careful. That's where you have to have a sound understanding of both technicals and fundamentals because you could say, well, this is technically bearish and I am selling it. But I think we might be fundamentally off here. And that's a form of risk. Where the market is moving in anticipation of something that hasn't happened yet. Well, what if it doesn't happen? So that's like, so Sebastian says it could be September. Yeah, but they thought, um, was it uh, February, the January meeting, right? They thought they thought January. Nope. Then um, what? When the next one was April, right? Oh, it's not April. Then June, not June, September. Oh, not September, December. So on and so forth, right? Well, if it's not December, it'll be February. And it, we just keep doing this over and over and over and over again. Right, and we did cover that before the announcement, Mark, where I'm like, the market is anticipating that because the Fed tries to be transparent, they're going to give us a hint that they're going to raise in, uh, 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 start to think about raising interest rates. Maybe not September, but they're going to start preparing us. So, like, might as well tell us in June that maybe September, and then September comes along, and they're not quite ready, but now December's green light, right? So they gave us six months to prepare. That's what the market was ready for. Right? Just think about it. How would they do it? They have to prepare the market. They're not the stupid national bank. I mean the Swiss national bank. The Swiss national bank went against 200 years of, of well, how about 50 years of modern central banking policy. I mean, what the Swiss did was criminal. What a central bank should do is what the Fed's doing. And in this case, be as tra transparent as possible and give the market at least six months to adjust because you tell them um, what's happening, what's going on. Now, the Swiss National Bank on Monday said 
the peg to the euro is still the central policy of the Bank of Switzerland. And on Wednesday, they, uh, they almost killed the market. FXCM went out of business. Well, they had to get bailed out. Alpari went out of business and a bunch of others. I mean, just because, only, not because they were bad companies, because the Swiss National Bank were a bunch of liars and criminals. I think it was criminal. They had all the time in the world to prepare. So anyways, if the Fed is going to raise interest rates this year, they have to prepare the market. So in my opinion, it can't be September. Right? It can't be September. They didn't prepare us. So if it's December, they're going to have to prepare us in September, right? But even six months would be good. But certainly three months or eight weeks, I guess, every time they meet, right? So um, it can't be September, so maybe December at best. But I think they made it pretty clear that they, even that's unlikely. So the dollar does not have to be strong for the next six months. Does not have to. Unless the the Fed changes their sentiment. Just look at their dot chart, right? Anybody look at Fed dot chart? And the Fed tells you this stuff. I don't know why people don't pay attention to it. Yeah, so it's it's not going to be for a while. So the the dollar can stay weak for a while, which means well, euro dollar may go up a little bit, but maybe something else goes up a lot. And maybe it is pig. But I'm still going to watch these areas because if it if dollar yen did go back up, that would be a very good place to to watch. And if not there, well, then somewhere else. And then that just gives me lots of time. So if it doesn't if it doesn't bounce off that this area that I have identified up here, well, then maybe in September I'll look at it again. Thank you for the heads up on the news. Let me get trade the news going for our CPI. This is brought to you by tradethenews.com. This is a 24-hour live broadcast test channel from the Trade the News Broadcast Network. If you are hearing this message, your sound card and network configuration are working properly. Yeah, well, we're in currency wars, right, Stephen? So they're suffering, but that's what happened to the United States. But how about Swiss National Bank? They have negative interest rates, and the Swiss franc is still strong. So what if you're a Swiss um, ski resort or a fancy Swiss um, hotel? Or what about Rolex, Patek Philippe, so on and so forth? Your Swiss, Swiss watches now cost 50% more than they used to, and they were never cheap. Oh. 
Holy smokes, Baltic Dry Index, 773 today. Remember, it was just five something like two weeks ago? 680 maybe two days ago? Now almost 780. Wow. recovery in the Eurozone. Just over a minute to the data. Weekly initial jobless claim expected 277,000. Claims expected 2.21 million. May CPI month over month expected 0.5%. Core expected 0.2%. Year over year CPI expected 0.1%. Core expected 1.8%. Watch psych levels too, eh, Brew? I think we're on 59, aren't we? If it's a bad number, this is going to skyrocket. CPI data in the US just be Two hundred sixty-seven thousand for claims, ten thousand lower than expected. CPI zero point four percent is one tenth lower than expected. Court zero point one percent is also one tenth lower than expected. Year over year at zero point zero percent and one point seven percent, both one tenth lower than expected. Pending claims two point two two million, a little higher than expected, with the backbone revised up to two point two seven million. Again, the CPI numbers across the board one tenth lower than expected. There you go. We'll see if it can hold it. Got some uh, challenge up there. I'm sure you have this on your charts, but I just want to make sure. We should be able to get to... Um, 59.50 fairly easily if it wants to do it. Yep, it's tickling the 2250. Yeah, the Baltic Dry Index is pretty surprising. It still has a long way to go, but that's uh, an improvement for show. Sure. Whoop, whoop. What else is going on? USD CAD daily S3, I think it is. Uh, we have Aussie dollar back at 78.50. and But the next monthly pivot's way up there, like 79. 
and we're through the weekly R1, and we're, but we're at the daily R3. So you, based on daily pivot points, USD, uh, Aussie USD is done for the day. But who cares about buy up? So we got the uh, 59.50 up there. Initial jobless claims piece of number, or should I say an average? It's average, but not bad. Average. So someone had mentioned um, Aussie dollar earlier, and I'm wondering if they're setting it up now, which I suppose would be better. A um, couple of things going on here. Where are the pivots? Okay. Daily R2, point strike level, weekly M4, all around the 78.50 mark. So it's reasonable if you had to. Let me get rid of this. Okay. I want to just continue to mark the, the zone. Do, 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 do. Take a look at that USD yen. Right. We had this double bottoming, didn't we? A double bottom for the double bottom, wasn't it? Maybe it was here. Yeah, the JLO, the double bottom on the right shoulder of the double bottom. To turn so that we could turn a fifteen minute chart if it was going to do it. And hopefully this happens, if it does happen, it happens because market participants, you know, relax after the uh, adjustments and then they're, they, you know, they slowly add to risk on positions. More likely than not, we'll just have, um, we'll have tough trading over the next um, eight or nine weeks. But we already talked about that. It's all fairly predictable, right? Okay. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we had it. Let me draw it.
something to that effect, right? Yeah, it's a five minute chart, but something to that effect. That would reverse, that would be the reversal on the right shoulder of the larger, no, that that's actually it, all right. That is the left and right shoulder, okay. Left shoulder, right shoulder. So I'll mark up our future buy zone would be in here. Is that going to happen today? Well, I guess it would have to go up near 123 and then drop down near, uh, it'll either be 80 or 50. So I think it's going to need some time, right? Yeah. Well, we'll see. That's what we're here to observe, right? That's our job. Remember, if you're not waiting, you're not trading properly. And so that would be a trade plan, and you'd be sitting here ready to go along at a bounce here tomorrow. You shouldn't be trying to figure out what you're going to do now. You should be figuring out what you're going to do tomorrow. So here's a 14 level if you want to pick that up. We haven't had a good opportunity since here. Let's uh, back out. So we'll mark this. This is the projected top of the week. We knew that on Monday. Okay, now let's change this.
projected top of the month is a little higher. But you see the cluster. Monthly, weekly M4 is monthly. Um, did I get that right? M4 monthly or clustered? So uh, monthly, no, weekly R2 is the monthly M4. There we go. So that would be an interesting area that maybe we can start consider looking for shorts. Okay. For example, if you're a professional trader, would you know where the monthly rivet zone is? Yeah. So, yeah, it's 1550. So, if you thought well, that's where it would reverse, then you would stay a bull. Because remember, this hasn't reversed. You would stay a bull on this until you got 1550, and then you'd, you'd go cautious, assuming a reversal pattern. Right? You see what I mean? And that's it. It's gone. There's another one that's interesting to watch. Piggy, 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 can't you see? So the issue with this one is it's already at the monthly reversal pivot. Interesting, isn't it? And I would say if if euro dollar was wanting to go up to the monthly M4, then the pound dollar would want to go up to its monthly R2. Then traders exit and uh, it comes down. It's not that the dollar is going strong. They just simply stop doing what they were doing to, to make it weak. You know who's probably very upset is Draghi. Huh? 
How much is Draghi spending per month on quantitative easing? Hundreds of millions. <laughs> well, it's certainly a billion, tens of billions. You know, a hundred billion would be better than a hundred million. All right. And that's supposed to weaken the euro. Kind of sucks it's up 1,500 pips. Or, well, let's see, it went down to what, 104, 105? Let's say 105, so it's up 900 pips. <laughs> uh, Demeter doesn't understand. Well, um, all right. Well, let's do a a five second overview, and then uh, I need a bathroom break and a coffee break and um, um, all that kind of stuff. So we'll just call it a day then. Um, let's do it this way. Oh, you know what? I'll use this chart. Okay, good. Let's start with the chart. Ah, uh, that worked none. Let me turn trade the news off. Uh, I can't do it with the marker. All right. All right, let's do this quickly. I'm trying to do this quickly. All right, this is going to be my chart area. Uh, this is money supply. Okay. Money supply. So if the money supply... I guess I should draw it in the appropriate color. I'm trying to do this quickly, but uh, I'm an overachiever. All right. All right. So here's money supply. Okay. Money supply one. And what what are we what, what are we talking about? Um, all right. So he. The ECB is buying bonds. ECB longing or buying bonds. Oh, bonds. Okay, might as well just write it out. All right, so how does this work? The ECB goes to a bond dealer and says, I'm going to buy $100 billion worth of bonds. The ECB gives $100 billion to the bond dealer. The bond dealer gives them $100 billion in bonds. The $100 billion in bonds sit on the ECB's balance sheet. And the bond dealer deposits the check for $100 billion in their checking account. And the ECB basically just kind of prints it, right? But whatever. So in this case, more money has been added to the system. The ECB gets bonds, the money supply goes up, okay? This way, there's a shift, right? So the, the supply of money increases, and now you've got money supply too. And in fact, this is M2 money supply, Oops. but anyways, uh, uh, MS2, okay? So when the quantity of something increases, what happens to its value? It decreases. So that's why I say that. But it's some, you know, the, the euro should weaken, and, and well, what's, what's, 
Draghi at the ECB trying to do? He's trying to increase asset prices, which means, again, a weaker euro. You're going to need more euro to buy a car than you used to. So in terms of euros, prices have increased, and that's called inflation. And he's doing it through the increase of asset prices, right? By devaluing the currency. And a weak euro makes German exports like BMWs and Mercedes uh, cheaper to Americans or to others buying them. So Draghi's spending all this money, but the euro is up, not down. So I just thought, hmm, he's probably not happy with that. What happens to interest rates when the money supply increases? Okay. Have to have a money demand curve for that. You know, I can do this quickly. What color does a cayenne look like? Oh, I got cayenne. What, what does? Oops. What color is? Uh, I, I guess. Um, we'll use a black line for money demand. Okay, money demand, that's the money demand curve, money demand, great. So, uh, this will impact interest rates. So when money supply started, we were here, and this was the interest rate at that time. And now, money supply increases, and it drops interest rates. Okay, because it moves, it moves down the money demand curve. Right? Pretty easy stuff. So he... You know, the, so all the PhDs at the ECB, they're, they're debating over the slope of the money demand curve. Um, and it's just, they're upset because they're adding to the money supply. The money supply is growing. But maybe it's because the bond dealer deposits the money at the bank. And what does the bank do? Lends it out. What if they don't lend it out? The money goes to multiply, and um, the money supply goes up dramatically less, and the ECB spends $100 billion, and nothing happens. Okay. And this is a problem in the United States. Why should a bank lend out the money it has parked at the Fed in excess reserves if they can only pick up 3% by loaning it to somebody? See, now we're in this conundrum, aren't we? The Fed parked all, gave all the, put the money into the system. The system starts with financial intermediaries like banks, right? The bond dealer puts the money in the bank, and the bank um, deposits all of it at the Fed and doesn't put any of it into the economy, and nothing changes. Except the bond dealer got rich. Thank you, Goldman Sachs. One of the primary bond dealers that the Fed deals with. Goldman Sachs gets rich, nothing else happens. 
Yeah. So at some point, the Fed needs to raise interest rates because then we have all these excess reserves sitting on the sideline. And uh, there seems to be demand for housing. And there seems to be credit for things like autos and stuff. So if we can normalize interest rates to at least a reasonable level, Fed funds rate, let's say, is 2. Discount window is 3. Prime rate is 4. Mortgages are 5, let's say. And banks are like, OK, sounds good. And they start making loans. It's easy. Banks have unbelievable amounts of money to put out. And all of a sudden, boom, inflation skyrockets in the United States. Because right, because the, 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 the money finally trickles down to the average Joe. And I said, watch for this in the Eurozone. Wait for the money to trickle down to the average Juan or Johan, right? And then buy the Aussie dollar. Is that helpful, guys? Just as a way to wrap up, we ended up going, you know, um, hour and a half, I guess. Two, uh, two, no, hour, yeah, hour and a half. Do you guys find this stuff interesting? Yeah. So just remember, um, the PhDs at the Fed and at the ECB and at all the other central banks. They're debating on the slope of the money demand curve. Money supply they can calculate. It's a little tricky because they don't say, you know, we want, well, they could. They could say, we want to increase the money supply from 14 trillion to 16 trillion. But it's kind of hard to tell what the effect of that would be, right? But they can control the interest rate much easier, and it will have an effect on um, the money supply. So Greek bonds, for example, uh, three years ago were like 20%, right? So they had to drive that down. So how do you drive down interest rates? You buy bonds. And this is what open market committees do. We talked about that yesterday. What does the Federal Open Market Committee do? They buy and sell bonds. Now, how often do they do it? All day, every day. Five days a week. At the New York Fed. That's what they're doing. Buying and selling bonds. That's what they do in the open market. Um, they just buy and sell bonds. Yeah, I have it, I think, but I can always cover that, Ron. No big deal. Um, so they buy and sell bonds, and they do it all day, every day, and they can say, we want interest rates to be 1.25% as an example. They can control that. It will be 1.26, and they'll drive it down to 1.25. Then it goes down to 1.24, they drive it back up to 1.25. And they are that precise on a 24-hour basis. Then I can tell you that. Now, how many bonds are they going to need to buy and sell? Well, they don't really know. So they say, oh, throw down, you know, throw down five billion. I ah, didn't quite get the effect we wanted. Throw down another five billion. Boom. All right, that did it. Oh, we overshot a little bit. All right, scale back two billion. And they're doing this in the course of like an hour. They might throw down five billion and another five, another five billion. Oh, too much. Take out two billion. And that's what they did before lunch. No joke. So they can get it exactly precise. 1.25. But they don't really know how many bonds it's going to take, so that can increase and decrease the money supply in ways that, you know, are re you, can, 
you can roughly predict them, but you don't know precisely like you do with the interest rate because you can see that. That's an open market thing. Okay. And adjusting RRR, well, forget about that, yo. Nope, that, that's like completely unpredictable. All right, guys, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Um, you, you trade safe out there, you hear? Yeah, thank you guys. And like I said, if you could leave a comment on uh, the video. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Comment allez-vous? And remember, tomorrow we're going to be at fxstreet.com. 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 Cheers.